Professor Chris Wise gets ideas for his buildings from all sorts of places. For his latest one, he remembered a favourite landscape. Five years ago, I was down in Cornwall in the middle of the winter, and uh, we went for a walk one afternoon. And it was January, and it was really, really cold and very sunny. And I remember walking along the middle of the county towards Land's End, and the light was just amazing, and you could see everything really, really beautifully clear. And I suddenly realised what was happening was this, the sun was bouncing back off the, uh, off the water and reflecting up into the sky and sort of etching everything out of uh, you know, solid air. And in a way, what we were trying to do when we, when we designed this bridge was to get some of that feeling of just walking through the air and having the light bouncing back, a sort of blade of light, as Norman Foster called it. Chris had to turn to a new inspiration to build this blade of light. The Millennium Bridge is like two giant guitar strings and you just walk down them. Of course, like any guitar, it can vibrate. And when we designed it, we checked that really carefully to make sure it didn't vibrate too much. The way that it carries the load is that the tighter you tighten these strings, the less they sag in the middle. And so the Millennium Bridge is tightened between the two sides of the river with 2,000 tonnes pulling against each bank, which is enough to carry the weight of 5,000 people. The first sketches for the Millennium Bridge were done with a group of colleagues in a bar in London. The basic shape of the bridge has remained the same ever since. But would it work? The Millennium Bridge across the Thames was open to the public for the first time today and then promptly closed. Police stopped people going across because of concerns about how much the structure was moving in the wind. The design of the slender bridge means it is supposed to sway, but the fear was that with so many people crossing, some of them might be injured. Our reporter Gillian Hargreaves is on the bank of the Thames. Beside the bridge, is it open, Gillian? Can you feel it moving from there? Yeah. Can you? Just a little bit. Chris has brought his son Tom to the yeah. opening day. It's not so bad. It's when these great waves of people come past that it, that's what causes it, isn't it? Why is it wobbling? <laughs> Basically because it's strong enough to carry their weight, but sideways it's not quite so strong. And so it's not, it's not so much a question of strength. I mean, it won't fall down. It's because it's, um, it's just vibrating, again, just like a guitar. And you can feel it vibrating about once every second sideways. And what we really want to do is probably we'll do something just to slow down the vibration eventually. But this is like a sort of full-scale experiment, this bridge. Never been done before. I mean, 10 years ago, it would never, ever, ever have been done. And so we've, we've pushed the technology of, the, of, of bridge construction forward a bit. And so it's not surprising that you get the odd little thing which is, doesn't behave quite as, you, as you'd hope. <laughs> God, it's amazing. I don't know whether it's good or bad. Most people don't mind it, but some people feel a bit uncomfortable, as you can see. I think the Millennium Bridge is a bit like a Formula One racing car in terms of bridge design. It's right at the leading edge of, of what's possible. And in fact, as we've shown recently, it's just beyond what's possible and we've got to do a few things to fix it. I'll give you the key and then you can open the door, right? OK. Yeah? Which lock is it? Uh, I think it's that one down the bottom there. So. Okay. Since opening, the bridge has been closed to the public, and the engineering team has been working Thanks. on a solution to the famous God, it's wobble. It's different to last time, isn't it? Way different. <laughs> <laughs> and can you feel it wobbling? Yeah, kind of. Little no, bit. that's not. You're not supposed to say that. All right, start again. Yeah. Okay, ready? Mm. Can you feel it wobbling this time? Not at all. No. Let's see if we can get it going, shall we? Yeah. I'll tell you what. Ready? Let's jump up and down. Yeah. Ready? Three, two, one. Oh, well, then. <laughs> no, it's not working, is it? How are they going to fix the bridge then? How are they going to fix it? Well, yeah. the basic problem is these... Uh, you see this mm. joint here? Yeah. What's been happening when the bridge moves sideways like this, yeah. the bridge opens and closes yeah. each of these joints. And so they're going to put a damper in at each of these joints. Do you know what that is? Um, no. I'll show, I'll show you. It's made out of um, a little pot like this with some goop in it. Yeah. 
and then a little piston like this. So if you imagine one of these being set in here like this, yeah. right? And then the piston goes inside it. Just try and push that piston backwards and forwards inside there, but don't go into the goop. Just go backwards and forwards. So you can see that moves, if that was opening and closing, that would move really easily, wouldn't it? Yeah. Okay. So now try it. Imagine the goop's there. Now push it into the goop and see if you can do it. Give it a good old push. See how, see whether it, is that easy? Oh, yeah. Now pull it, pull it back. Imagine it's the bridge going the other way. Oh, yes. And push it the other way. Now it's moving more easily. Oh, yeah. Look at that. So that's much harder, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So what, every time that that goop changes its shape, mm -hmm. it absorbs energy. Yeah. And it actually is, it's the changing shape of the goop that absorbs all the energy and that's the thing that damps down the vibration and stops the, the bridge from actually moving. So will the bridge ever be fixed? Yeah, it'll be fixed. It's going to take a few months to fix it because we've got to buy all the dampers and, and put them in, but a few more months and then anyone can walk over here and it won't wobble.